Hello everyone, and welcome back to another GIS lecture video. And in this lecture video, I want to continue our discussion on the different types of fuzzy membership functions by talking about how we can highlight either large values or small values. <clears throat> and in many ways, this is going to be comparable to the discussion we had with the near function, which you can see from the previous video. Except that instead of having the midpoint be defined as 1, a fuzzy value of 1, we're going to define the midpoint as a fuzzy value of 0.5, and then increase and decrease suitability away from that midpoint, depending on whether or not we want to identify large values or small data values. So let's go ahead and take a look at small and large. So, the way this works, again, we're going to go back to our favorite graph type here. That was our data values. And our fuzzy values. And the way this is going to work is just like with our near, the user gets to define a midpoint. And this is the user. defined value. And in this case, what the midpoint does is the midpoint explicitly specifies what user defined, what raw value is going to have a 0.5 fuzzy value. Right, so in this case, right, our midpoint is going to be the midpoint of the fuzzy value. And what will happen is, in the case of, let's do small first. So this is going to be for small. And then we'll talk about large in just a second. What this is going to do, in the case of small, is every, as, as we go away from, actually, let's flip that a little bit. Right, as we go away from, As we decrease our data value, as we go away from our midpoint decreasing our data value, we increase the fuzzy value. And as we go away from the max, as we go away from the midpoint increasing data value, we decrease our fuzzy value. Right, so by doing this, we have this sort of S-shaped curve. And what we have is a region of high fuzzy values at low data values. we have this region of low fuzzy values at high data values. And then we have this spot here Right, this transition slope. Where we have this transition slope that is centered on the midpoint. Right. 
And so just like with the near function, right, small and large have two parameters. We already talked about one, which is this midpoint, which specifically defines what data value is going to be in the middle of this transition and have a fuzzy value of five. And the other is going to be what's called, so one again was the midpoint, which let's see if I can make that a little bit cleaner here. Right, one was that midpoint. And the second thing we have again is going to be that idea of spread. And so what spread is going to do is it's going to control the slope of the S-curve. And what do I mean when I say control the slope of the S-curve? Right, This transition slope, again, centered on the midpoint, which is always going to be a fuzzy value of 0.5, Right, we can imagine a scenario. Let me draw. Let me draw a couple of scenarios here. Right. right. So this is our sort of normal sort of S curve. Right. It comes down. Right, that's one option. Right. If we increase the sp the spread. what happens is this slope actually gets steeper. Okay, so we're going to do green here. Right? If we increase the spread, what happens is the slope actually becomes steeper. Actually, hold on. Let me make that a little more realistic, right? Because our midpoint it right, has to stay the same. We can't change the midpoint. So what happens is it becomes steeper, meaning right, the transition is steeper. So what does that mean? What that means is we have fewer values, fewer, fewer raw values being mapped to intermediate fuzzy values. So what we end up with is more value, more raw data values being mapped to extreme fuzzy values. Right, and conversely, right, if we were to decrease the spread And again, right, we can't change the midpoint. The midpoint has to stay the same. But what happens is we sort of make this almost more linear. Right? It starts to become a little more linear. Right? So as we decrease the spread, right, the transition is more shallow or more gradual. But the transition is more gradual. And what this means is that we end up with more
intermediary. intermediary fuzzy values. Okay. And again, we can move this midpoint around by changing the midpoint parameter. Right? But it's always going to be, no matter what, the spread is going to run through that midpoint at a fuzzy value of 0.5. But as we increase the spread, this transition becomes much more drastic, much more steep, much more sharp. So we end up with more raw values being mapped to extreme fuzzy values, either extreme high or extreme low. So this is graphically what small looks like, where our high, fuzz, where our high fuzzy values are being mapped to small raw values. We can flip this function around Again, keeping our midpoint. Right, we can flip this function around to look something like this. Right, this is large. Exact same concept, exact same parameters, right? A midpoint defining 0.5 fuzzy value, increasing in one direction, decreasing in the other. The difference here is that rather than prioritizing high fuzzy values to low raw data values, we're prioritizing high fuzzy values to high data values. But we still have that spread parameter which we can use to tweak the severity of that transition. Okay, so hopefully that makes sense. And as always, if you have any questions, please reach out. Thank you.